Hi, I'm Henry from The Dogs Butters, and I'm speaking with Dana Reilly today. Uh, she's a filmmaker, and her film Favorite Daughter is celebrating its premiere today at Doc Leipzig. Hey, Dana, thanks for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, we were so looking forward to see you at the premiere. Actually, you were supposed to be there. Um, what happened? I it was uh, financially not an option for me. I sadly I couldn't come all the way to Germany as much as I would have loved yeah. from the city. Your film is about your relationship with your mother and your grandmother during the pandemic. How did you get the idea to film your family in this time? I started this project in 2020, shortly after the pandemic started, as you mentioned, and I as many people felt, um, I just felt much more interested and concerned about my own family. And so rather than choosing a project for my thesis film at the University of Texas at Austin, that would require me to engage with people I didn't know, I wanted to look inward and focus on my own, what my own family was going through during that time. Uh, the film gives a very private insight in your life. How was your feeling about publishing this material? It was very challenging to work with family and to contend with their boundaries in terms of um, sometimes they may have shared more than they would have with a stranger because of the, our dynamic. So in a lot of ways, um, I felt even more powerful than I might with a subject who um, or with a participant um, who I didn't know. And that uh, presented a great deal of responsibility that I took very seriously. And I tried to work very closely with my mother and my grandmother to make sure that I showed them a, um, a rough cut and a, or a fine cut of the film before I had mixed the audio to make sure that they felt comfortable with the material that I was including and to give me an opportunity to explain what I think the audience would get from the clips that are included and how I feel that it reflects a very nuanced and truthful portrait of who they are. Um, but yes, I did not want any information or um, vulnerable moments to be presented to the public that my family didn't feel comfortable with. Yeah. Um, are there any scenes that were too private to publish them? Yes, there were quite a few scenes where my mother and my grandmother wanted to tell me something. Even though the camera was there, they, it, you know, I think the camera's presence can be very cathartic and um, perhaps also the interview setup can sort of elicit <laughs> this desire to share information. And there were moments that were clearly for me and not for a general public. Are there also moments where you did not uh, switch the camera on? Um, I didn't do that. I'm in, <laughs> As a documentary filmmaker, I have the habit of keeping the camera rolling at all times and using discretion in post-production to remove elements that I feel were not intended to be captured on film. How was your relationship with your family after the COVID restrictions? You mean you mean once the restrictions were, were lifted? Once yeah, there were no yeah. longer yeah, restrictions? Sorry. Oh, um, that's a great question. Um, COVID was such an interesting time. It almost feels like a distant memory. And sometimes it's hard to remember how stringent the rules were. I don't know how exactly it is in Germany, but in the United yeah, States, it's opened up quite a bit. And they were very strict, depending on the city, especially in New York City. I was living in Texas at the time, and the rules were a little bit more flexible than they are, um, or less stringent than they were in New York City. Um, I think when things opened up, um, I don't know if my relationship with my family changed after the restrictions were uh loosened I think we could all sort of breathe a sigh of relief and particularly for my grandmother we were very fearful that COVID would diminish her quality of life when she has so few years left and I think I'm really grateful that the pandemic restrictions were lifted when they did because she was able to spend a lot of time with her friends she's a very social creature yeah. as you can tell and she's pretty self reliant and so she was able to go to dinner parties at her friend's mm. apartment and get some time out of her apartment and in a more um stimulating environment um between the end of the pandemic and the last months of her life great 
at the end of the film, we get to know that your grandmother has died, unfortunately. Uh, how do you and your mother feel with seeing her on the big screen and showing her to other people? I just can't express how grateful I am that I finally picked up a camera and filmed with my grandmother when I did because her death was very sudden. It was very unexpected. I mean, she was 90, so it was coming eventually, but um, she wasn't uh, ill for very long. So um, I really had no idea that the material that I would film would be, you know, some of the last years of her life. And I'm really touched that I've had this tremendous privilege to share her image and her uh, her spirit with people who didn't know her and to give people who didn't know her because she had a bit of a following. She was a celebrity, which isn't really touched on in the film, but for people who knew her in the event planning and culinary space, they got to sort of see what she was like in the privacy of her home around the dinner table. And I hope that that's a gift for other people as well. Yeah, of course, it's it's a gift. <laughs> um, my last question, have you planned any new projects in the future? Yes, I have a couple of projects I'm working on. I still am filming with my mother. The film, when I, when I set out to make this film, Favorite Daughter, I was mostly interested in capturing my grandmother and uh, capturing what, you know, how her life might change confined to an apartment at her age and also having her youngest daughter moving in with her. I thought that there might be some interesting controversy there. And then the film really took a turn in the sense that my focus really gravitated towards my mother, who feels like a very unresolved character in the film. She's really contending with a big life change and is still navigating it in a way that my grandmother was not urgently navigating any major uh, <laughs> conflicts. And so I'm still very interested in how my mother and my relationship will change now that my grandmother's no longer here. And I'm capturing that slowly over time. There's no rush <laughs> to complete that project. Um, I mean, and I'm working on another film about women in a male dominated industry, which is yeah. pretty much the space that I was working in before the pandemic hit. Very interesting. Thank you very much for joining us today. And I wish you all the best for your future with hopefully many more films. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.